Hey guys, uh, it's Cougar184 here from Toonie Stark Industries. Uh, coming back at to you after uh, Wonderfest here. I uh, had a great trip uh, with Steve. Uh, learned a lot of good things, got great models. Um, we were able to enter some of our uh, models in the contest this year. Uh, looking forward to next year. Um, I know we have a lot that we want to accomplish. Um, the Dry Dock, um, Future Enterprise D, um, a lot of the Enterprise D and the refit is kind of our, our focus for uh, coming coming up here. Um, what I wanted to do, um, I know we've been doing our build videos. Um, I did want to start a series just on uh, basic model building. Um, the first part here, I was just going to go over some, some prep tools that I use, um, kind of go over uh, just high overview of how I use them, uh, pros and pros of using them, costs, where to pick them up, um, how they're going to help you make your, your life a lot easier, um, and uh, we'll go from there. I know later this week I'm planning on doing one for uh, just applying decals. Uh, if you guys want to see something specific, go ahead and message me on uh, Facebook. we got Toonie Stark Industries. Um, we have a, a Facebook page there. Uh, go ahead and message us there. Um, comment below. Um, be sure to subscribe. Uh, we definitely want to uh, put out more content. I uh, just want to see what you guys want help with. Um, what I'm thinking too that might be cool, I got to just look into this. Uh, maybe just a, a live build uh, party. Uh, get some other people around uh, the states or the world here um, and mash those up and have bunch of different build parties going. Uh, show us what you're working on. Um, like I said, that's something I, I want to do this year. I just got to see how uh, to coordinate that uh, so everyone can watch too. Uh, I think it would be fun. Uh, but I'll just dive in here. Uh, so I come from an automotive background. So uh, I mean, painting cars, uh, that's where I've picked up a lot of my, my niche stuff as far as uh, my, my finishing stuff. Uh, um, I mean, whether or not it's going to be something completely separate, but uh, we'll get into that later. Uh, but just getting your models ready. Um, garage kits um, are a, a big area of opportunity, um, just in the, the form that they're made. I, I love resin kits. Uh, I de my dad can vouch for that. I, I bought tons of them. I stuck with them for a long time. I stayed away from styrene just because... I like the, the feel of resin, the, the weight of it. Um, it's, it's it's just fun to me. Uh, but I mean, especially someone getting into the hobby or just moving over from like a styrene kit to a resin kit, um, they're gonna encounter problems right off the bat. Um, even with styrene kits, I know I'm working on the Enterprise D right now, the, uh, the clear one. And that thing out of the package is just full of mold release. So uh, if, if you don't get that stuff removed um if your primer doesn't stick um long term so i mean it it might stick right after you paint it um but if you mask some stuff off and take that masking tape off and your base coat comes off you're not going to be a happy camper you pretty much got to go back to square one uh get it back into primer uh without any uh i, I call them little tear marks because you got to repair that area you, I mean, you got to fix the problem too of what, what, what caused it, and th I mean that sometimes that just you you put the kid away and not come back to it, and, and it'll be daunting. Um, so I, I don't have all the products that I I've, I've used in the past. Um, I'll talk about them briefly. Um, I'm gonna go over kind of my new process. Uh, I I try to be cost conservative as far as my supplies. Um, I I mean we spent tons of money on these kits. Um, but I also don't want to break the bank uh, building them up with supplies. So, I, I mean, I'm going to find the, the product that, that'll do what I need it to, look the way I want it to. Um, but, I, I mean, I'm not going to spend 20 bucks on a bottle of primer for a model. I mean, it, it, it's got to it's gotta stick, but uh, I don't think it needs to cost that much. Um, a lot of it, it's, it's in the prep work. Um, and making sure you get stuff that's formulated for it. Uh, so I'll just jump, jump in here. Um, most of the stuff too you might have around the household. Uh, big thing here, um, your kits. This helps a ton. Uh, regular Dawn dish soap. I don't start washing my models right away. Um, what I tend to do is 
I want to get the at least the base sanding down. Um, I was looking for one of my pads here. It looks like I have to run to the store and get a new one because the other ones were burned out. Um, but these foam pads uh, the, at the O'Reilly's, there's actually a smaller one. It's about a quarter inch thick. Uh, it says fine on it. I love those things. Um, they're little foam things. They'll bend and curve to your model. Um, it's enough to scuff up the surface, uh, get things, some things going. Um, start looking for the surface imperfections. Um, I, I always want to get as much, just the sanding um, or shaping done that I need to. Not putting any putties down, um, but at least give it a good scuff. Um, get your, your pieces cleaned up uh, as far as what needs to be taken away, not added to it. Um, and then to the don, the don so if you can let it sit overnight, um, scrub it, um, get that mold release off. If I mean, I, there's, there's products out there that um, will, will bite through it. I, I, I mean, I did find a few, uh, but ultimately, if you can throw it in a, a bin overnight um, with some Dawn, I mean, you, I mean, you want a clean paint job too, right? <laughs> you don't want debris and stuff in there. Um, but yeah, uh, soak it overnight over Dawn dish soap. Uh, after that, uh, probably another thing around the house, rubbing alcohol. Um, what I'll do after I get that part dry uh, does two things. Uh, it's going to get the water that's left on the surface um, evaporating faster. Uh, I don't know how many of you tried to tape a part that's wet. It's, it's not easy. <laughs> Uh, and even if you can get it down, uh, most likely it's going to come up while you're painting and back to square one again. <laughs> uh, the other part that it will do for you, um, your hands, when you are painting, uh, they have oils and stuff on them uh, that they get attached to the resin. That's a point too where um, your paint's not going to stick. So, I mean, get the rubber gloves on. Wipe that, that, that part down uh, with that rubbing alcohol um, right, right before you're ready to paint, obviously. Um, get the parts dry. You can move on from there. Uh, this is something that I also use. It's called a tap cloth. Um, these are also available probably at any, any uh, auto, automotive store. Uh, what the, it's like a sticky rag. So, I mean, if you touch it with your bare hand, your fingers are going to be a little sticky afterwards. Um, what, what the cloth is designed to do is to pick up any surface lint, um, debris that's sitting on top of the, 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 um, the surface. And I mean, you can, I've used this as a couple on a couple models on a, something I've just washed and then wiped over with the, um, the, the rubbing alcohol. But I mean, look how much dirt that this thing's pulled off on a so-called clean part that's soaked overnight. Um, that I've wiped down with uh, um, rubbing alcohol. Uh, that's, that's a ton for, I mean, I've, I've probably done like three or four models with this thing. That, that should be clean from a, from that standpoint. I mean, it soaked overnight. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's something that you would wipe the, uh, the model right before you, you spray. Uh, Couple kits that I've got in the works right now. Um, I'm working on the one one thousand Enterprise D. It's a clear kit. Um, I'm also doing the Enterprise D, the um, the AMT, uh, the, the clear kit is on. I'm more or less doing this one because I want to test some some things out on it beyond, before I get to my big one. Um, but I also want to see how my colors are looking. So I've got this base coated. Uh, later this week, I'm looking to at least put um, the decals on this section. So I want to see how that's going to look with this color that I've mixed up. Uh, but we will see how that goes. Um, if I can get these windows cleared off, I know they take a long time to do. <laughs> um, I'm going to get a clear coat down on this, and then I'll be ready for at least that first set of decals so I can see how my Aztec's looking. Um, I've got uh, Cameron Decals, a uh, great guy to work with. Um, he's actually helping me with the Enterprise D. At, um, you know, he's got some, some family things he's working through right now, but... Uh, it's obviously not ready for decals, but uh, uh, that's, that's my plan. I want to make sure I get my colors right, um, get what I can done. Electronics are going to take a, a while to put all that in. I know if you guys watched the video I posted earlier, um, while I was at Wonderfest, uh, I got the phaser bank 
lit up. Uh, it was 40 LEDs that I had to wire up, and I mean, I, I'm happy with the effect, but there's there's still a ton of other things that I've uh, I'm watching the show, just taking my notes as far as the I mean, even the windows break up as far as colors, uh, blues, yellows, and whites, and some of the I mean, if you look at the neck. There's certain sections, so I'm going to have to block those off, and yeah, that'd be fun. Uh, so, you got the parts cleaned off. It's ready for paint. Um, do this outside. I'm going to briefly do this inside. I'm probably going to get killed. I'm gonna, I have the windows open right now. Um, wife's not going to be home for about eight hours, but this stuff stinks. Um, Bulldog Adhesive Promoter. This stuff... Will, will save your model. This stuff will make pretty much anything stick to anything. Um, what what it is, I mean, it promotes adhesion between the, the part that you're painting. Um, so I got the Warbird, this is a resin. Um, I actually haven't cleaned this yet. So, um, but I'm, I'll clean it later. But just, you don't need a lot of this stuff. You, I mean, this can's probably $25. Um, I'm not getting paid for uh, promoting them, uh, and it's, I, I'm going to show you, it's its not a lot you want on this stuff. Pretty much by the time you've got the spray done, um, you don't want any puddles, um, that, that's it. On the, obviously you want it to be the complete part, um, but it's already dry, and then you'd move right into your primers right away. Um, I automotive background so I, I mean this general purpose automotive primer that I get pick up at O'Reilly's um, it's great stuff uh, SEM if you want to spend a little bit more uh, makes a great primer for plastics uh, I would recommend them as well um, but between that bulldog and it's already smells in here uh, and getting your primers down um, that, that that's kind of your starting point um, You'll want to let the part, especially after your, just your first coat of uh, primer, what I, what I like to do, um, especially with these clear parts that I am light blocking uh, from the outside, uh, is a couple coats of, of primer. Um, you, it's still kind of see-through, but not really. And then I've got this black that I uh, coat the model with, and then I'll put the final coat of primer on the top uh, just to layer it um, and then I can not shine any uh, light through it but this is a clear part <laughs> or it was a clear part no, I can't see through it light coats um, let it dry uh, what you'd want to do then I ideally I mean put that first couple coats on Give it 24 hours. Let it cure. Um, this is another automotive product they use. Uh, 3M, it's the green tape. Um, it sticks very well. Uh, doesn't leave any residue. Um, I know painter's tape kind of is the same thing. I Even on a surface that's properly uh, prepped, I don't like painter's tape. It, I want my lines to, um, if I, especially in my max of the often area, I want it to stick down until I'm ready to, to unpull it, but I also don't want to uh, have to force the tape up. Uh, so it's, it's great tape. I think the roll of this stuff is probably like six bucks. Um, but I, I always call this the paint, the paint test. So fresh stick, stick it on your part, really rub it in into it. Your part's properly done. This should just pull right off. And nothing should be on the back side. Test around the, the part. This will probably take you a couple minutes to test different areas. But if there if there is a problem, there shouldn't be with, with I mean with those steps. But if there is, it should show up now. And I'd much rather fix a couple coats of la or layers of primer than get halfway through my painting to find out that there was a little area, especially around corners and stuff. Um, 
I don't want those pulling off, especially on a clear model. <laughs> I mean, on a, on a opaque one, you, I mean, you can sort of touch it up. On a clear one, that's that that'll, that'll ruin it. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, big fan of these 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 sponges. Um, like I said, there's like the quarter inch one. These are like Home Depot. Uh, just get different grits of those. Uh, what I tend to do is I want to uh, rough a part out where I'm, where I'm doing like my primer and or my putties and stuff. Um, I usually start with about 150 grits um, to get my my putty shaped, and then I work up from there. I, I want a steel wool finish at by, by the end. Uh, you don't want to use your primers is uh, filling in scratches. You I mean you want the area that you're priming to be what it should look like, um, glass smooth, uh, before you put the primer on there. Um, obviously not glass smooth because you know you do want it scuffed up for the the primers to bite into it. Um, but I mean, you, if you start with like a 60 grit, maybe just make sure you're hitting the the putty that you're you're trying to shape. Um, but work up from there. Uh, like I said, I go to a fine steel wall as my final step before I am ready to, to, to prime. Um, but yeah, I, I like 3M sandpaper. Um, I find that, I mean, it's a little bit more money, uh, but I mean, if you go with a cheaper sandpaper, uh, you're gonna use it up a lot faster. And what I mean by that is you're, you're, it's gonna clog up. Um, you're gonna go through a lot faster. This stuff, I mean, even if, I, I can use a sheet of this for a couple months, most likely, um, to shape apart. Um, and even if it, it wears down a little bit, um, I can come back to it later um, and use it just to, maybe I, I need it to, to scuff an area, but I'm gonna be hitting some of the plastic uh, of the kit or the resin, and I just don't want as much bite, but I also don't wanna switch up to maybe like a 220, uh, but I need to get, get something at least shaped. Um, that, that could be a whole other uh, series on uh, just especially complex curves and stuff. Uh, what I got here uh, that I was going to show really quick. Um, so I'm working on a little Warbird of uh, the AMT kit. Uh, if any of you guys have played with this kit, they've got a wicked seam uh, when you put these together. I've got a couple coats of uh, primer or uh, putty down. Uh, another, here we go. Couple different primers or putties that I use. Um, I'm a big fan of the two parts uh, glazing putties. Um, this one you can get uh, pretty much Walmart, uh, O'Reilly's, uh, wherever your automotive store is. Uh, if you've got like an automotive paint store, uh, Everclear or Evercoat, uh, they have a lightweight glazing putty. Uh, it's probably uh, a jar about this big it, it lasts you a while it's two parts i love that stuff um it sets up pretty fast uh, you shape it pretty quickly um and there's no shrinkage uh the stuff there's no shrinkage um it's just you got to make sure you have your ratios right uh, i was gonna do just a quick seam here uh, just to kind of show you guys how much that i use i, I always say that you want to change the the, the two part you want to change the color, but not much. If it changes a lot, it's going to set up fast. It's going to be a little bit rougher. And I find that it doesn't bite into the plastic as well. Uh, so uh, it's, I'll try to get on, on camera here when I mix up a little bit for uh, these seams here really quick. Uh, but yeah, just change it. it it's a pea size of this stuff compared to and then to like a half size uh, like that to like a little a little drop you get a little drop out of here is all you want for the, the mixture um, other thing I do like to use uh, this I, I make sure you practice with this stuff for sure before Abe's epoxy sculpt this is some good stuff uh, it's two part you mix it up it's a clay uh, it dries rock hard, so uh, you you want to pretty much have 
this shaped exactly how you want it and when it dries um, be able to come back to it with one of those fine pads I was talking about uh, and have it ready for primer if you have to sand it after it's dry this stuff's hard um, you can you can wreck your model <laughs> uh, reason behind that is you're gonna have to put a lot more pressure into the sculpt sanding that stuff uh, to versus the resin or the plastic behind it and uh, this happened to me a couple of times is I'll be sanding that but I'll be also you're also sanding the area behind it and you're you're bringing it down uh, you're losing your detail there uh, so I uh, make a mixture of uh, water and alcohol um, use that to wet the clay once you have it in the area and work it until it's pretty much what it should be uh, like I said it should be what it needs to be, let it dry, and then come over it quickly with one of those uh, scuff pads just to have it ready for primer. Uh, but if you have to shape any of it, it's it's difficult. So that's why I said practice first. Um, but yeah, it's great stuff too. I don't use model putties too much. Um, just my experience with them, and I've tried a, different, a lot of different brands, is... They don't bite in as well as I want to the model or there's shrinkage so I'll get it the way that I want it to. I'll get the primer on there and a week later it kind of sucks back in a little bit more. Um, I, I want to kind of know within 24 hours what my, my putty's done and what it's going to look like after I sand it. And if I have to wait a week after I've got a part sanded that maybe it's going to Still shrink in a little bit more. Um, not fun. <laughs> um, I think that's all I got for today. Uh, like I said, uh, check us out on Facebook, um, Tuny Stark Industries. Uh, give us a like there, subscribe. Uh, if you want to let us know below uh, kind of what contact you're looking for, uh, like I said, I'm going to be doing decals either later this week or next week, and then. Um, go from there. Uh, look forward to hearing from you guys and uh, happy modeling.